Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be reviewing 10 questions that are most commonly asked. Whenever I get messages on Instagram or through YouTube, these are the 10 more common questions that I get. Although I would love to really go in depth in answering all these questions to each and every one of you, it becomes a little bit more challenging, especially with working and life. So I figured I would just do a video and kind of condense those questions and answer them here for you. That way you can always reference back. So let's get into question number one. Number one, what did you do for shadowing? Okay, so this is a very common question. A lot of programs require some form of shadowing experience. So I did two different shadowing experiences. One was during college, I was working as a therapeutic activities assistant, which is pretty much just kind of like a counselor for an after school program, but it was in a hospital for children with physical and mental disabilities. At this specific hospital, they did have inpatient patients where they did have have providers such as PAs and I shadowed a PA there. My second opportunity was I was actually shadowing a PA at a radiology office and in this specific radiology office the PA performed procedures as well as they always had to have a provider on staff to ensure that no patient ever had any allergic reaction or an anaphylactic reaction to any contrast. Those were my two shadowing experiences. At that time, I got my hospital shadowing experience through the job. And then the second one was a family friend. If you may not have a friend who knows a PA or if you don't know a PA personally, or if you don't work in a place where you can shadow, the best, best advice would be one, reaching out to local primary care offices, or even better is urgent cares, you will definitely, definitely have a PA to shadow there. And then your local ER, they do have a whole entire volunteer program where you can actually volunteer at a hospital. But even better would be if you're in that, maybe you took a year off from college and entering PA school, is to get a job as a medical assistant in an office, an urgent care, get a job as a scribe. It's honestly the best way to get PA experience. I know, however, sometimes they require volunteer experience. At least you have that connection where maybe those PAs work somewhere else and they you and you can shadow them there. Or maybe you can just go on your days off and shadow for a few hours. You'll kind of be accustomed to those PAs and you know the PAs. And those are my tips for those pre-PA students who are looking for shadowing experience. All right, question number two. What was your major slash what prereqs did you have to take for PA school? Mine is not the traditional route and I apologize for that. I went to that combined undergrad and PA program where I completed PA school and undergrad in four years. That being said, for me, the first two years were my undergrad and the last two years were PA school. For me, it was a little bit different. I still had to take all my prereqs. My major at that time was in physician assistant studies. Everything was pretty much like, I would say like a biology major or a typical science major. I had to still take my biology, my math courses, my English courses, my philosophy courses. I went to a Catholic university, so I had to take some religion courses. I had to take my chemistry, like my orgos, my physics. I had to take all that, but it was just done where you had to take multiple science classes each semester and then through summers. The best, best, best advice for me is if you know at least the area that you're applying to, so maybe you're applying to New York or maybe the, the Northeast, I should say, look at those schools and just ensure that each of those schools take the same prereq courses. Or if you really prefer a particular school, maybe they have extra courses that you may need to take. Another thing from what I hear from fellow pre-PA students is that you have to take the GRE now. I did not. I apologize for that. I guess I was lucky. It's kind of like the MCAT. So I guess I understand where there has to be another exam to get into PA school to really kind of narrow down the applicants. The PA profession is becoming highly competitive and very, very popular. So definitely Definitely another way to kind of narrow in and zone in on the best applicants. Number three, where did I go to PA school? So I went to St. John's University in Queens. As you all know, I was born and raised in Queens. So it was kind of nice for me. I 
was originally a pre-med major. You probably already heard this. So I was going into college with a semester's worth of credits. My goal was to finish college in three years so that I could start med school earlier. So I did already have a semester's worth of credits and I was going to do another semester during the summer just to complete everything in three years. But a month before college started, I found out that St. John's had a PA program. I heard of a PA, but wasn't really sure about what the profession entailed. One of my friends was in the PA program. Shout out Kimmy. She kind of told me about it and I did my research and this was like a month before college began. I was calling the administrative team at St. John's and was like, please, can I go get into the PA program? I meet all the requirements. I had all the grades. I was kind of, I guess, harassing them. Apologies for that, but I was just really anxious and I really wanted to get into the program, but hey, it works. I know it's not a four year program anymore. It is a five year program. For me, it was a local school. I was really, really fortunate enough. I was able to stay at home during PA school. So I didn't have to pay for rent or pay to live somewhere else. How did I get into aesthetics? Another common question. So as you probably already know, I did a video on this link right over here, but just quickly coming out as a new grad, I worked in derm. This was strictly a medical derm practice, but then I transitioned to a cosmetic and medical derm practice. So I had exposure when I was in the dermatology field. At that time, I was also working as a surgery PA. So I was able to also go into plastic surgery and general surgery combined cases. That being said, the more injectable portion and the skin portion was all at my derm practice. I do have to say, if you're a surgery PA, most likely you're gonna have good hands. So I think that kind of speaks volume, but also if you are just in any specialty with hands-on experience, I feel like that gives you an advantage. And then coming back to New York, my friend Erica was already working at my current practice jacked. I interviewed and I got the position. So that's how I got into aesthetics full time. That being said, if you're looking to get into aesthetics, one, work in derm or try to find a part-time job or something like that in derm or plastic surgery office. Two, shadow. You can reach out to different practices to shadow or work as a medical assistant, even though you're a PA. I will say it's really, really hard to just have people shadow you and then they leave. That's not really how the industry works. So you really have to like give your part. I wouldn't recommend to just be like, hi, I wanna shadow you, it's great, but you have to kind of put more than just shadowing effort into it. Another thing is there are a lot of courses out there as well. Um, I did attend one many, many years ago. You know, if that's something that you're interested in, maybe you could use your CME money that your job gives you to attend like a cosmetic derm CME course or an injectable course. So how I got into aesthetics, there's a whole video on that. Go ahead and watch it. This was just kind of the shortened version of it. Number five, is it best to go into aesthetics as a new grad? So this was a question I got and they felt that if they went into aesthetics as a new grad, they would kind of felt pigeonholed. You know, I see both sides. If you know this is the specialty that you want to be in forever and you had rotations in it and you love it, then by all means, go ahead, find a job and get into the industry early. However, for me, I had my German surgery experience before and I really, really, really feel that that just played a vital role in me just growing as a provider and just enhancing my skill set. I don't know, maybe I'm biased and I think that it's nice to have that as a background as well. But of course, anyone in the aesthetic industry who knew from the get-go that this was their passion, I 100% believe to follow your dream and follow your passion. This is just what worked for me specifically. Okay, number six. How did I manage stress slash free time during PA school. For me, one, I had a really, really, really close group of friends in PA school. Your PA school friends, they're the ones going through this whole entire journey with you. So really, really rely on them. And then of course, your friends and family outside of PA school. So for me personally, I either gave myself Friday night or Saturday night to kind of do something for myself, whether it's seeing friends, doing date night, hanging out with family. I 
felt that if I knew that I had plans that night during the day, I was really able to like kind of focus and concentrate for me whenever I have plans or if I don't have anything planned, I feel like then I procrastinate when I have things actually planned the night. I'm like, okay, I have to finish X and Y by 6 p.m. because I have to start getting ready because we have dinner, whatever the case may be. That's when I really actually focus and study. I always just kind of made a plan or a weekend plan for myself as to like what I wanted to study for that weekend and then any plans that I had. I knew that I had to get X and Y done before I can go out. Honestly, I really didn't work out as much. I do think that would probably be a good stressor. I mean, we had an elliptical in the house. I did it every now and then. I like attempted to study on the elliptical. It does not work for me. You know, like you're on the elliptical and you're reading your notes. No. For me, no. I had to have earplugs in and be focused, but teach their own. I guess nowadays, now that everything's kind of virtual or online, you can probably like do some form of cardio and listen to your lectures. So that could be a good way. Number seven, why did you decide to become a PA? But in short, prior to PA school, I definitely did not even know what a PA was or what they did or, or anything about it. And I really just did my own research. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, can you give me advice? There's really not much advice that I can give. Like, I did my own research. I can give you advice as to why it's great to be a PA, but as to like the way to approach it, everyone's situation is going to be different. But anyway, why I became a PA. One, after I found out the role of a PA, I knew this suited me. I really just love the flexibility that a PA has. I love working as a team. I love working with my medical director. I love the model of a PA. I love that I can, you know, switch specialties. I love that I can be in an autonomous setting. I love that I can be working with my supervising physician. I love that. And I think it suits me and my personality really well. Also really, really like for me, just kind of fit into my life like at that time definitely thought about going back to med school I didn't apply because I was happy with being a PA I couldn't imagine going back to school and then having to do four years of med school and residency and I 100% love all the doctors that I work with and I give everyone in medicine and especially the physicians a ton of credit I see it with my own husband it's a lot of hard work and dedication however I don't like when people say that becoming a PA you're a cell out or you didn't get into med school. My previous PA student actually got into three med schools and she actually chose PA school because of our video of like PA versus doctor video that Michael and I did. So shout out Jody. so proud of her. That's just like one example. It just depends on what you want to do in your career and what's appropriate in your current life situation. Number eight, what was your first job after PA school? My first job was a medical germ practice and after about 10 months, I switched my role into becoming a surgery PA and I did derm part-time. I think I did a whole video on this as well, but essentially my friends were in the hospital at that time I was young and I just kind of wanted to network and work in a hospital setting. And I just felt like if I don't do it now early in my career, it would probably be not too late to switch into the hospital setting, but it's definitely all that medicine is fresh. Your rotations are fresh. So you kind of just feel more comfortable making that transition. So yes, that was my first job. Number nine, advice for becoming a PA. The best advice that I can give is when you're in high school, you can look for some colleges who have established PA program and maybe they have like a five year or six year program. So that would be great to kind of look into that and see what scores you need to get or what um, SAT scores you need to get and get into the PA program. My second word of advice is if you are in college and looking to get into a PA school, zone in on one area area where you know you want to go to PA school, look at those programs and just see what the criteria is. See what your grades have to be. See what prereqs you have to be. See how much shadowing experience you have to be. That way you can get a head start. Like maybe on your first or your second year in college, you can get those volunteered hours. It's really hard for me to just kind of give advice because I'm not really sure. Every person's situation is so different, but that's my advice for high school students. That's my advice for pre-PA students. And then definitely after, you know, after college, if you kind of are still unsure which route you want to go or what direction you want to go, take that year to work as a medical assistant, work as a scribe and see what a PA does, see what a doctor does, see what a nurse practitioner does, see what a nurse does and see what direction is right for you. That's the best advice that I can give to you all. I definitely didn't have any mentor. There was no one in my family that was in medicine at the time that I was going or applying to PA school or going to PA school. So I really just kind of, you know, researched it. Google's like was kind of like my best 
friend and you know I did just volunteer experience just to see if this was the right profession for me. Also watch those videos, the MD versus PA videos if that's the two specialties that you're looking forward to. I did another video, it's right over here on Michael's channel that you can kind of listen to and go through like what the role of a PA is. Really it's just looking at each program and seeing what they require. It's very different now than it was when I went to PA school. Maybe the newer PA grads probably be a little bit more helpful on this, but if there's any other specific questions that you may have, just leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Number 10, specialties I practiced in. I did medical derm and cosmetic dermatology, general surgery, urgent care, and then aesthetic slash, I guess, cosmetic derm maybe if you want to call it. I kind of really love my PA journey and all the different specialties that I practiced in. I learned so much in all of these specialties and really knowledge is power. Uh, it's really nice that you you just won in every specialty you just learn so much from your colleagues and from patients and just kind of like makes you the provider that you are today and just makes you so much more comfortable as a provider. That being said, I reached a point in my career where I knew I wanted to kind of see what specialty I see myself practicing in the long term and that was aesthetics or cosmetic dermatology and I was ready in my career to make that transition. I guess it was a little bit of timing just with like all of our moves and stuff but it definitely felt right. Anyway, these are the 10 most common questions that I get. Maybe I'll do a specific PA Q&A video where you can just ask all the three PA questions, all the PA questions that you may have. And then I'll do a separate Q&A on just, I don't know, random things that you guys wanna ask me. I hope you enjoyed this video. It is a little bit long, I apologize for it, but I figured these are the 10 most common questions that I get asked quite frequently. So I figured I'd just make a video and that way, maybe if that was one of your questions, you may have it answered. And if I don't answer your DMs, I really do apologize. I do try to keep on sending them to me. But anyway, thank you so much for watching subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and follow me on instagram and other than that i'll see you all on my next video and maybe i'll do a pa q a all right i'll see you all bye